Hi there, I'm Professor Juris and I'm going to make you a quick video on how to produce a Van Dyke Brown print. So to start with what I've done is I've taken my sheet of paper that I'm going to make the print on and I put it on a nice hard surface here so it's a hard surface I can coat on. And then the next thing I've done is I've taken my negative and I laid my negative down on the piece of paper and I went ahead and made a tracing of the outline of the negative with a pencil so that I can see where I'm going to actually coat the emulsion at. Now, what I've done ahead of time is I've gone ahead and I've taken my solution of um, Bostwick and Sullivan's um, brown printing solution or Van Dyke brown printing and I've measured out the drops. Now, I'm doing an 8x10 print and it takes about 40 drops to coat the 8x10 paper. So I've gone ahead and uh, measured that out to save a little bit of time in the video. And the next thing I've also done is I've taken my brush and I'll be using again a Japanese hake brush and I've soak this in distilled water for a little bit and that's really important to use distilled water you don't want to use tap water to soak your brush before you start because it'll get iron and stuff into the um, the brush hairs so then I went ahead and blotted it off real quick and let me give a quick endorsement here for um, Bostick and Sullivan uh, this solution I've never had a problem with any of their um, alternative process solutions they they're top quality um, I give them five stars and I've been using uh, their chemicals since about 1983, the early 80s, when I first started uh, doing these processes. And in all those years, I've always gotten good service, great service from them, and um, high quality stuff. So I really recommend using their, their solutions if you're doing this. So I'll put my bottle back here, and I always make sure I put my lid on tight so that I don't spill that. And then I'm ready to coat. So I will take my brush right now. And what I'm going to do is take this solution, roll it around a little bit, and I'm just going to pour it out across the print like that. I will take my brush and wipe out the thing real quick, and then I'm going to start to spread it. And I'm just going to go back and forth this way. And then I'm going to come down this way. And then do it this way again. And I'm just going to move this chemical around. And you notice there's not like a lot of chemicals a lot of like puddle of chemicals on the paper so that's really important sometimes you'll get a little hair I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the camera in the camera the hair that's right there um, on the piece of paper and what you want to do is just get that out and then try to get it off of your brush um, there's another one right over there and this is the first time I'm using this brush so there may be some loose hairs coming loose and I'll just go ahead and brush this again and you don't want to brush it too much because depending upon the paper that you use you might start to actually um, pull some of the emulsion off of the paper. So that's about all that I want to um, brush it. And I will set the brush down over there then and um, clean that again in distilled water for my next print. And now what I'm going to do is dry this with a hair dryer. And I'm going to dry it on um, the high setting but on cool temperature. You don't want to dry these with uh, heat. So I'm going to put this on here real quick. Now, you'll notice that I spent a little bit of time um, drying that because I really want to make sure that it's dry before I put my negative on top of that. If you would actually put your negative on top and you had still a little wet spot on there, um, that would actually ruin your negative, so you don't want to do that. Now, if you are doing something with some very important negatives, historical negatives, maybe negatives that aren't yours, you might want to start a business doing this for people. 
if you're doing something like that, you want to put a piece of clear acetate down on top of the piece of paper before you put your negative on top of it. Um, and that will always protect the negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this over for a second right here and get my contact printing frame. And again, I'm using a contact printing frame that um, came from Bostick and Sullivan. And it was made for them by Elm Industries. And you've seen this um, in the other pictures. So um, I'm just going to set this down real quick right here and open this up. And this is actually the best way to make these. And uh, with this process in particular, having the, um, the back that opens up so you can actually inspect the negative is, is very helpful. So I'll take my negative now. Um, and it's going to go emulsion down against the um, against the piece of paper that's coated. So when I find the emulsion again on a large format negative, I'm always reaching for the top right hand corner of the negative. And when I have my right hand um, touching this corner, then the emulsion is facing me. So I'm just going to take take my sheet of paper now, right here, and I will actually flip the negative then because there's my top right hand right there and I'm just going to flip this down and then it's emulsion to emulsion and that's how we make a print like this and I'm going to take and grab the top two corners now and flip this down and I'm you know I'm holding it making sure I got it right where the, the paper marks are and I will set that down in my contact printing frame and then I'll take the back of the contact printing frame and set that down in there and then I will secure the back and I secure the back again by pressing these down and sliding them over. Just like that. And there we have the print right there. And this will be ready to go into my exposure unit now. So I'm gonna put it in the exposure unit. Um, I'm gonna start with the time for this negative at about 15 seconds or 15 minutes, I mean. So after 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to open the back and look at it. And that may be too long in my exposure unit, but my exposure unit is getting kind of old and the bulbs are kind of weak. So it may take that much time, but we'll see when I do that. Okay, we'll see you on the next part. So we're back and I just wanted to give you a quick look at the way the print looks in the contact printing frame after it's been exposed. Um, and then also talk maybe just a minute about these particular contact printing frames um, that you can get from Bostick and Sullivan. So the nice thing about this frame is that, again, it has a hinged back. And you can open up this back right here and open this up. And you're able to inspect the print. And this is a printing out process, so you should be able to see the print. And you can see the image right there. So that, that was at 15 minutes. Um, and we're going to go ahead and develop that and look at it. But the nice thing about this is if it was too light, um, I could close this back up and I've only moved part of the print so that what happens is by closing it back up, um, I could go put that back under my light if I needed to. And that's really important if you're like printing out in the sun because it'll save you a lot of time if you if you see one that you can like look at it in five minutes and see if there was enough sun because the sun is always variable it's not going to give you the same exposure every day um, and another thing I wanted to say about this particular contact printing frame is I think these came out about 10 years ago when Bostick and Sullivan started to have Elm Industries produce these and these are made in the USA and um, these are really high quality and they're a little bit pricey maybe but you get what you pay for now you could buy another contact printing frame online and I always tell my students this and um, you know you can buy another one online but I've owned so many of them before I got this and I've had this for a long time and the other ones seem to last maybe a year and if you're only taking this class I guess you know you could get by with just a piece of glass and a um, piece of gator board like I'm coating on here and put a duct tape hinge on it and use that but you won't be able to look at the variables in the sun but if you're actually serious about this and you want to make really good prints the, the pressure also that it presses your negative against the paper is superior to other contact printing frames I've seen and used so this thing holds up very well and um, it presses the print really tight 
and it, you know, it'll last you for your career in photography. So let's move on now to developing. Okay, here we have the print and it's um, ready to be developed. So what I'm gonna do is just set this print down in the dry tray and I'm gonna start with water. I'm just gonna pour water on the print. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna agitate this back and forth. And I'll probably do it for within this first bath of water, just about a minute. And now what I'm going to do is pour this in my bucket here. Again, this is, I'm using a dry sink, so it's not actually hooked to a um, to a drain. And then I'll pour some more water in there. And this print looks a little bit light, but um, something that you need to consider, and you're going to see it's going to darken up a little bit here when I fix it here in a minute. Um, is that this is also a, a dry down printing process that works just like fiber-based paper. So the print is going to get drier um, or darker as it dries. So you want to um, make it probably about three quarters of the exposure that you would um, looking at the print when it's wet. And it's going to dry about 25% um, down and get a little bit darker. So there's that bath. I'm going to do one more quick water bath here. And what I'm doing is just trying to get all the unexposed um, Van Dyke Brown solution off of the piece of paper here. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fix the print. Now for the fixing bath, we're going to use um, sodium thiosulfite, which is um, hypo or pure fixer and it's a very weak version of um, a fixer so it's not a super super strong version of fixer that we're using and um, the fixer the sodium thiosulfite uh, hypo about uh, four heaping teaspoons um, per liter of water so if you have a one liter container um, you would just put four teaspoons in of regular tap water and shake it up and that will be your fixer make sure you dissolve it good so I have mine here. I actually made a gallon, and I'm just going to pour this on there, and you'll see the print start to darken up. There we go. And you can get several prints through a, a tray full of fixers, so I will just leave this. Now, you would not, you would not want to use um, fixers like Kodak Rapid Fixers or any other um, type of photographic fixers that are available unless it's, again, so, just pure sodium thiosulfite crystals. Um, which is considered to be hypo. And I usually fix the print maybe about two or three minutes just agitating it like this and that's all it actually needs. And at that point what I would do is move it into my wash. Now these are actually fairly permanent. Um, during the early days of this process when it was invented they, they thought it wasn't that permanent of a process and a lot of people actually chose making like cyanotypes and other processes over that because um, they were using regular fixer and, and when you they found when they used um, the sodium thiosulfide just pure hypo and a really weak solution of it um, that it, the print will last a lot longer so you wouldn't want to use just such a weak bath like this for um, fixing a fiber based print or fixing film it, it, it's way too weak for that but it works perfect for the uh, the Van Dyke Brown process so now what I'm going to do is um, transfer this I'll give this another minute or so in the fixer and then I'm going to transfer this over to the um, wash tank I transferred the print into our print washing tray and I again I'm using a Kodak automatic tray siphon right here to wash the print and the washing time um, kind of varies by the paper if you're using a, a paper um, that's somewhat heavy, a heavy watercolor paper. Again, I'm using the uh, Hannah Meal Platinum paper, but if you're using watercolor paper like Reeves BFK and so forth, most of these papers you should wash them about 30 minutes. Um, if you're starting out and you're using just the Crane's Crest paper, um, you, you don't want a lot of um, agitation in the water with the Crane's Crest because it'll actually tear it. 
So you just want to, again, have your say, tray siphon set on low, uh, you know, the water pressure on low, and probably five minutes um, with the Crane's Crest paper will give you a complete wash. And uh, to prove that or to back that up, I have prints that I made 30 years ago that um, we'll take a look at when we go over prints that uh, still look like the day I made them. So now the next step is going to be once this print is totally washed for 30 minutes, um, I'm going to take it, I'm going to lay it on top of a, a sheet of paper towels, and then I will lay, actually lay a piece of paper towel over the top of it and gently blot it. Um, and then I'll lay it on a fresh paper towel just on my table to dry overnight. Now another way you can also do that is if you um, wanted to just hang it by the clothesline. You can just um, get a couple clothespins and you know clip the two top corners and let the print hang straight up vertically um, someplace, but it's going to drip on your floor. So um, you know maybe if you did that over a bathtub or over some sink that you can uh, let it drain into. And that's it. And I'm going to let this dry overnight and then um, the next part of the video will be the evaluation of the print and see if we need to make one lighter or darker. Um, see you on the next one. Okay, here we are at the uh, print evaluation of um, our Van Dyke Brown print. So uh, this print was exposed for 15 minutes under my... Um, light booth that I made that um, has ultraviolet black lights, uncoated black light bulbs in it. And as I said in another video, it, um, it's kind of old and I think the bulbs are kind of dim. So I was looking at this and I thought, you know, it just doesn't have the kick I wanted. So it was pretty bright out with the sun today. Um, so what I did is I made another print um, in the sun for 15 minutes. And this print is gorgeous. I mean, I want to compare the two. Look at the browns, um, the difference in the browns on the print. Here's a bigger piece of brown up here that you can see the see the difference in the tonal value that's um, going on. So, a part of the, ex the when you're examining these prints is like, and you're looking at these, is you need to figure out if something's not working right. Um, so this is a good um, showing of that, that, you know, when I looked at this print, I thought it's just kind of gray and it's just not getting enough exposure um, for after 15 minutes. So, you know, I went to 15 minutes in the sun where the sun is very powerful and this is, this print just came out phenomenal. So, um, you know, that just shows you right there that the sun is um, a good source for printing and having my contact printing frame, I was able to open the back of it up and see if it had enough light and then um, it did so I brought it in and um, developed it. <clears throat> so if you like this video give me a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button and we're good to go.